Hello, Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. When my guest hugs people, they get healed. But now, that same healing actually radiates from her on television, and multitudes are healed. Next. Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. I have to tell you, I am so excited about this show. Uh, Yvonne Atia, uh, born in Egypt, raised in Australia, and you'll hear when she speaks an Egyptian-Australian <laughs> accent. At six, you experienced your first miracle. Yes, so at the age of six, I fell from a three-story building. And- um, What did you fall on? I fell on concrete uh, oh, slab. Three stories. <laughs> three stories wow. building. It was, uh, it was terrible. I was on my back and um, I was in so much pain, but something amazing took place as I was falling. I was surrounded by angels. I remember what they looked like. Uh, they, were, they, they were my body shape, so they weren't big angels. They were holding hands, they were in a circle, and there was glorious light coming out of them. And when I landed on my back with all the pain that I was in, I was telling everyone that I just saw angels. I mean, I was more fascinated with what I was seeing more than the pain that was in my body. Um, but then I went to hospital, of course, and it became more real when I went to hospital because I was diagnosed with obviously um, fracture in my spine. Um, doctors said to my parents that by tomorrow morning, she should be dead. Why? Mm. Because there is a big possibility of brain hemorrhage. Mm. And they even said, x-rays are showing that the blood is, uh, the brain is swirling up. Um, and then they said, if she does survive that, then she will be quadriplegic. Um, paralyzed from the neck down. She will never be able to walk because the, the, the spine is fractured. And um, at this time, there was uh, dear believers. One of them is my grandfather, who was a minister. He did not receive that report. He did not receive mm. it. And I remember him sitting next to my bed. And um, he was just crying out to God. And that's a lot of the time what healing is, just crying out to God, God, would you do something? We will not accept that report. And uh, the presence of God was hovering in the room, hovering in the room. Um, the next morning, I was still alive. I mean, before they were telling my parents, you need to start getting prepared for the funeral because it's gone, it's happening. But the next morning, oh, she's still alive, what's happening? Um, and so that encouraged my parents and it encouraged my grandfather. And they continued to pray and the presence of God continued to hover around this bedroom. And I am totally, miraculously healed. There is nothing wrong with me. No one believes it. And at seven, before your very eyes, imagine this, a seven-year-old girl, she saw her uncle, who loved the Lord with all of his heart, become a martyr. Yes. So I was seven seed and um, we, in our street, we had the mosque and um, that day the imam of the mosque basically um, was preaching his Friday sermon. And um, he said that by the end of today, I, went, I want the blood of the Christians to reach knee high. We didn't think much of it, um, but they all came out of the mosque, unfortunately, with swords and knives and stick. And towards the end of the day, we've lost a lot of, obviously, the men in the village, um, including my uncle. So he had come into our street to drop his wife, who was pregnant at the time. And I ran downstairs to give him a lemonade. And um, as I was giving, I literally turned around. He was on the floor and he was, he was slaughtered. He was gone. That left me horrified, broken, um, angry at God at the time. God, why did you, for me, I used to think that God allowed everything, the evil and the good. And I, did, I wasn't able to distinguish mm. between the two. Um, but for, by God's grace, I received healing. I received great healing into, one of an, into an encounter um, where later on in life, God showed me that he was right there with me. He embraced me and he said to me, I want you to love Muslims. I want you to distinguish 
between Islam and Muslims. Islam's demonic, but Muslims are victims. And you are to love them because you're about to be used mightily in their midst. And, and you know what's so amazing to me? You have seen so many miracles uh, on yourself, and, uh, the, it, but you still did not really believe it was God's will to heal everyone. Some of you are in that category, too. You, you believe God heals, but you don't really believe it's God's will to heal everyone, especially you. What do you say? Yes, Sid, and I, I grew up in a church, unfortunately, where I never saw a miracle, never. Mm. And I received a lot of bad theology, which basically taught that Jesus healed to prove that he was God. And now that the Bible has been put together, then we no longer need to do this. And so this was what I grew up with. Mm. Now, I was challenged reading the Bible, and I must say a lot of people are challenged because you cannot, where do you go from Mark 16? Where do you go where it says, believers lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover? Well, I was a believer but I never experienced that. So that's what I grew up with. And so when that miracle happened to me, me, I, will, I just thought, well, God is just able to do all things, but it's not His will to heal, and you don't even need healing for your Christian journey. In actual fact, God doesn't even care about your body. That was my theology. God cares about you getting to heaven and getting saved. But your body, that's material. God doesn't care about that until he shook my world. <laughs> I guess the first experience was after I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. I had um, an, a, a, well, a skin condition for three years. Um, I, Couldn't a doctor help you? Yeah, well, no, that's the thing. I went literally to every single doctor and we had pharmacies and I used every single product that there is. So then I came to a position where that's not gonna work and one of the doctors suggested that I would go to see a specialist, which I did. He diagnosed me and he gave me a terrible report. He said to me, I don't know where you contracted this virus, but that virus is going to cause your nails to fall off and unfortunately it will deform your skin and eat away your skin. That was the word. He Ooh. had no cure. And I remember I was, I came in my car, I sat in my car and I had just been baptized in the Holy Spirit. So I sat in my car and I was speaking in tongues because I love doing that. Mm. So I'm sitting in the car in, enjoying God because God just wants to meet, be filled in the Holy Spirit. And as I'm praying, he breaks in. He said, I want to heal you. And I pretended like I didn't hear him. I was like, Why? because I was scared. I was very scared. Mm -hmm. Why? I was scared that if that healing did not happen, then it would shake my faith. I was in a good position spiritually. I had I just received the baptism. Why the devil is so diabolical. Yes. Go ahead. And so he basically ignored what I said. And he said to me, I want you to mark seven days from today. And in seven days, you will be healed. That was the first thing. So I pulled out my phone and I took photos of all my skin. And I just said, Lord, um, heal me, just heal me. Seven days sit, seven days, I wake up one morning and I knew throughout the seven days something was happening because my skin was changing color. And literally I flicked them all off and I am completely and totally cleansed. Oh, and, and the thing that really sensed it is you and your husband went to a healing conference of someone that's been a guest on our show, a friend of mine, uh, Randy Clark, and what happened to you and your husband? Basically, I didn't know much about this stuff. All I knew is that when God comes with his fire, he touches you. So I just sat on the internet and I said, fire conference, um, glory conference, healing conference, whatever it is, but I just wanted a touch of God. And so fire conference came up and I said, wow, that's like next week. And so I, I booked it straight away. I had no idea who Randy Clark was. I, I just knew that there's going to be fire in this conference. <laughs> and I won it. <laughs> At any cost, I just won it. So we got there and I saw Dr. Randy Clark and my life was turned upside down. Why? Four days of solid biblical teaching. And every time he would teach, literally I felt like I, was, I wanted to fall on the floor because he thought that it was God's will to heal at all times. That was the first thing that was like, wow. Everyone. Everyone. He even said this, Sid. He said, okay, I'm going to pray for you to receive your, your first word of knowledge. 
And I remember I said, okay, so I'm sitting there and he said, this is how you receive a word of knowledge. You can see it, you can feel it, um, you, or you can hear it. So I sat there and I said, Lord, I see someone in the room with a very severe um, neck pain. Mm -hmm. And so I said it to me and I said to my husband, look, I'm getting this word of knowledge, but maybe it's just me. And I remember mm -hmm. he encouraged me. He said to me, Yvonne, if you do not practice, this is the word practice in, in, in the midst of believers, you're never going to have the faith to practice in the outside world. Mm -hmm. What are you going to lose? And I said, right, I put up my hand to Dr. Randy and I said, I got an, a word, you know, with this condition. And he said, come up the front, you call it. When I called it, a man came out and he said to me that he had this for over 15 years. And as soon as I called it, the pain left his body. Now that took me to another level. It's like, God can use me. He even opened my eyes, even my eyes could see. So my faith was like building up. Towards the end, the last day, he called me and my husband out. And that was the last thing I ever imagined. He looked at us, he had no idea where we're from. Um, and he said, God is giving you the Middle East. And he is saying that you and your husband will preach to Muslims and thousands will come to the Lord through the supernatural power of God. You will heal the sick, the mute will speak, the deaf, the deaf will hear, and you will see such a revival. At that moment, both me and my husband fell under the power of God for almost an hour, shaking, just shaking, receiving and receiving and receiving. God spoke to you. What did God say to you? He said, he confirmed what Randy said. He confirmed that. And uh, I, I want to just, you know, rewind a little bit because something significant led to that particular event. Just before we go to the Dr. Randy Clark's conference, um, we were invited to go to Malaysia for a conference. And um, my mom was sick. She needed a shoulder replacement. And I wanted to leave my children with her to go to the conference. And mom said, no, that is the week of my operation and you can't change the date. So I remember calling the hospital and begging them, would you please change the date because I've got to get to Malaysia. So they did. When I got there, I saw something that shifted my faith. Said, I saw a Muslim man on a stretcher with 30 members of his family. He was hit by a motorbike. He was totally destroyed and his body was not healing. They heard about our conference and they wanted prayer. He was healed. When he was healed, the 30 members of his family, they came to Jesus. Now that was a slap on the face because I was like, oh my God, healing is a great door to evangelism. If you operate in the supernatural, you would reach nations and you would reach them so quick and so easy. So when I went back home, my mom was healed because I said to God, I promise you, I'll give my entire life to the healing ministry if you heal my mom, because that way you are confirming that that healing power is yours. I go back home, my mom's healed. When I promised that, God opened the door for me to get to Dr. Randy Clark, mm. get trained in healing, that is receive the impartation. But listen to this. This is the most amazing thing. Yvonne and her husband then start a little house congregation, which gets larger, miracles start breaking, I mean, impossible miracles, cancer, I mean, all sorts of p things break out. It sounds almost like someone I got to know, Catherine Coleman. Yes. And, um, uh, and a man shows up, puts her and her husband on television, and they have literally reached thousands and thousands of Muslims that have uh, given their heart to Jesus and the miracles, the outrageous that happened just by someone watching her and her husband on television. Now, I'm going to turn Yvonne loose to teach you how to experience God's love, which she says is the greatest weapon against sickness, and you're going to receive that love, and you're going to get healed next. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. Prayer is an essential part to access every one of God's promises and blessings for your life. And praying daily in your God-given prayer language is so important in light of the times we are living. Introducing the brand new Sid Roth God Talk app. With this new prayer app, you will be able to set a reminder for when you want to pray. 
Let others know the time you spent in prayer each day for accountability. Take advantage of our worldwide prayer app community to lift your prayer requests to God. It includes a video teaching on how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how to effectively pray the supernatural language that God has given you on a daily basis. Watch our TV archives and ISN, our It's Supernatural Network, to build your faith to believe God for the impossible. The app is free and available for iPhone, iPad, or Android devices. Just go to your device's app store and search for Sid Roth's God Talk. Do you ever feel unloved? Like you wish you hadn't been born? Like the world would just be better off if you weren't in it? This is the truth. There is someone who loves you deeply. Before the creation of time, he knew everything about you and stored up abundant blessings for you. Every tear you have shed, he has counted. Every moment of happiness, he has rejoiced at. He watches over you from morning till night. He is your biggest fan. He formed you in your mother's womb. He adopted you into his family before creation. He has cared for you from the moment you were born. He declares that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. His thoughts toward you outnumber the sand on the seashore. He says that if your parents reject you, he will take you in. Even if your mother forgets you, he will never forget you. He will be a real father to you. He says that he has chosen you to be like his son so that you could be part of his family. He promises that you can know and depend on the love he has for you. His love is perfect. He will never abandon you. And he promises that if you draw close to him, he will draw close to you. We would love to tell you more about him. Get a free online download of the book, They Thought for Themselves, by logging onto the website, theythoughtforthemselves.com. We now return to It's Supernatural. And you know, Yvonne, you were in a car accident in 1998 and yes. you had a revelation. When, and when she shares this and then uh, when Yvonne and her husband pray over you uh, yeah, in, at the end of the broadcast, you're going to understand why it was turned for good. What happened? Amen. So I, I was involved in this car accident. Um, like for at least years and years. And so when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I got healed from a lot of conditions except this one. And I was frustrated because I didn't know what I was doing wrong. I was rebuking the disease. I was a lot of stuff. Um, so this condition left me with a lot and a lot of pain in my tailbone because I was stuck in between five cars on the highway. It was a big accident. I wasn't able to carry my kids. It was, it was terrible. Um, and so I wasn't getting healed and I was getting frustrated. I didn't know why the pain wasn't going away. And I remember once praying and I said to the Lord, you know what, God, I love you for everything that you've done for me. And I'm just gonna indulge in who you are. I'm really just not gonna be bothered with this back condition. And I'm just gonna love you for who you are. And I remember I felt God was saying good because that's what I want. So I started praying that day. And as I began to pray, I was taking into a trance. And in that place, I began to see Jesus for who he is. There was divine embrace. There was divine hugs. I always tell my husband, there was even divine kisses. God was like, I just love you I love you for who you are and I was telling God that I loved him and I did not want to get out of that glorious presence immediately I was on my back but it was a, a different place it was like I was on the seabed and I was laying on my back over me there was waves and waves and waves but the waves were heavy but they were gentle at the same time then I finished my prayer session came back to my body and as I was getting up and leaving the room I stopped because I was like, whoa, I always used to get up with a lot of pain, but the pain's gone. So then I went back to my prayer closet. I said, Lord, did you just heal my back? And he said, yes, I did. And I said, wow. And he said, my love healed you. But let me take you one step further. There's going to come a time where when you embrace people, they will be healed. The love that you received from me, you will release unto them and they will be healed. 
And at that time, I was like beautiful, but I still didn't believe it or I didn't really understand it until we had a healing meeting. And this lady came in and she was embarrassed to come up the front and ask for healing um, because her church didn't do that. So she thought at the end of the meeting, and I'm gonna grab Yvonne and I'm gonna ask her to lay her hands on me and do the whole thing. So she came to say hello to me and hug me first before she asked me for prayer. And as she was hugging me, she started to weep and she continued to embrace me. She didn't want to let go. And I, I was embracing her, not knowing what was happening. And I said to her, are you okay? She said, no, you don't understand. As soon as I hugged you, power hit me. I'm totally healed. And at that moment, I began to cry because I was like, right, you are right, Lord. I didn't believe or I didn't fully understand. But then that began to happen. And I began to tell people, healing is in his love. Because of his love and because of his compassion, he will wash you clean from everything. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn and find you <laughs> with her husband. And the two of them are going to pray that that same love that they okay. have will come upon you. And uh, they already found out people with blood diseases and other things are going to be miraculously healed. Uh, but uh, before they pray for you, I want you to pray a prayer with me. The whole purpose of Christianity is not the religion of Christianity. The whole purpose of Christianity is that you would have your own experiential knowledge of God. Pray this prayer with me out loud, wherever you are. Dear God, repeat after me. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I'm so sorry. I believe the blood of Jesus washes away my sins and I am clean. And now that I'm clean, I ask you, Jesus, to come inside of me. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. Amen. Yvonne and Mina. Rita Lara, King Jesus, we love you. Yes, Lord. And we worship you right now. And we thank you for what you're about to release on your people. Open up your hand and get ready. Get ready. Get ready to be showered in his love as I begin to release it right now. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we release your love right now. Thank we you, stand, God, and we receive this love right now. And as we receive this love right now, get ready, get ready for your healing. Yes. Because right now it is washing away. It is washing away sickness. You, it is washing away disease. You, it is taking away fear. Yes. It is breaking depression. Yes. It is getting rid of suicide. Yes. Father, in the Thank name you. of Jesus and by the authority you gave your children, mm -hmm. we baptize them in your love. In the name of Jesus, we baptize yes. them in who you are. Be filled in the Holy Spirit. Or Be restored. Or Actually, as, as I'm praying right now, there's conditions in the eyes yes. right now that God is opening not just supernatural spiritual eyes, but physical eyes. The eye's condition, glaucoma is going right now. Cataract is being healed right now. Vision, restoration. Take your glasses off right now and have a look. Start reading things you couldn't read before. For God is restoring your vision. Yes. He's giving his body, his bride 2020 vision for this year. It doesn't matter what we've been through so far because God is restoring things to his perfect plan. Blood conditions are being healed right now. What the enemy has sown for disaster, God is tearing apart and planting his word, his restoration and his love is for you right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. God. Receive it. Yes, God. By faith. Yes. Be blessed yes. and blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Many viewers report testimonies as a result of watching It's Supernatural. I am 23 years old. I just wanted to commend you on your program. It's naturally supernatural. I listen to it almost every morning, and it's inspiring how you have devoted your life to searching and sharing the truth. I am touched and glad you do this show. 
If you've been touched watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at sidroth.org slash praise. Next week on It's Supernatural. God was the original architect of the American dream, and He intended it for all people. I'm Dr. Jennifer Clark. Join me on the next It's Supernatural with Sid Roth as we reveal the true purpose of the American dream. Young Jewish man is addicted to drugs, shooting heroin and using massive quantities of LSD and speed. Life is one big party to him and he lives his life with reckless abandon. His nickname is Drug Bear and he's known for being proud and rotten to the core. But then he discovers a revelation that totally changes his life. He quits the drugs, earns a PhD and authors more than 30 bucks. Do you want to learn what his revelation was? Have you ever wondered if there's more to life? For the ending to this true story, go to www.theythoughtforthemselves.com. Your gifts to this ministry will help Sid air It's Supernatural in Israel 28 times a week and distribute his evangelistic book to the Jewish people worldwide. 